Great riding by Rigoberto Aran. He's, uh, again, he's not that, hasn't got that explosive punch, but he, he and Ivan Basso come forward to try and restore some sort of order, some sort of pace. Basso doesn't like this fast acceleration stuff that uh, Andy can do and to a certain extent that Frank can do. And of course, Contador we've seen. Mighty impressive by young Rigoberto Aran, though, who, uh, in my estimation, at least a week ago should have been made the uh, race captain, the road captain for Sky. Not because I've got anything against anybody else before anybody jumps down my neck at Garen Thomas, but he's just a better climber, and it's about the climbs now. And away goes Andy Schleck. Thomas Fuchler responds immediately. Oh, the great battling Tommy. Andy again, and Contador is in trouble. Contador is in trouble. He's trying hard to respond, and Cadell Evans is finding it difficult. He's, gonna, he's the man who's having to shut things down again, Sean. It's, it seems to be that uh, of the really big favourites, Cadell Evans is the man having to take the initiative here. Uh, yes, and uh, the question is, is the other ones uh, just, uh, you know, not able to do it? We see Evans there. Uh, Riding to close it down, looking around a lot and seeing what the other ones uh, are going to do, but still all back together here again. Thomas Vukler, amazing the way he is riding here, and uh, the attack from Andy Schleck immediately in the wheel. Uh, hopefully that Vukler do not do too much, because he could afford to sit back a little bit, just follow the leaders, take that fifth or sixth position, and allow the, allow the leaders to have the battle between themselves there, because they're not going to be too concerned about him. Uh, and uh, certainly, you know, don't get over anxious here and uh, try and, you know, mark the big ones in every attack. Vukla could pay dearly further up. Samuel Sanchez is back in this group. Well, he, he had a mechanical at the bottom. Worked hard to get back in and is climbing well here. One blues arded in, so we know he's in good shape. <laughs> Ivan Basso comes to the front with the sort of pace setting he wants to achieve the regular metronomic go and now it's uh, the Schlecks again upping the pace this time Frank not as explosive as Andy and Evans on the wheel quickly doesn't want to be missing out this time amazing that Pierre Roland is still in here responding although he's having to sort of fight his way back up Damiano Kuna going here this is the, the composition of the group Frank Schleck at the front then uh, Cadell Evans then Ivan Basso of Liquid Gas then Alberto Contador trying to sit a bit closer towards the front then the yellow jersey of Thomas Fokler yellow van and Det of uh, Omega Pharma Lotto is still in this group Jean-Christophe Perrault is the man from AG2 Isle Mondial the first time we've even seen him raise his head above the parapet the former silver medalist or the the silver medalist at the last Olympic Games in mountain bike but also a former national time trial champion so very all-rounder also Rigoberto ran in there Andy Schleck in there Kruniger is in this group as well. Pierre Roland comes forward, a difficult job for him today. Can set a, a pace that uh, Faulkner can follow. It will marshal everybody around them and just allow Faulkner to, to maintain as much reserves of energy as possible. Andy Schleck on the right hand side doing the usual trick. Looking around, he's looking across to the left to Alberto Contador as Roland just uh, eases the pace up a little. A little conversation between Roland and uh, Thomas Vokler, the yellow jersey, terrific responses by Vokler. I don't think we've seen the really big attacks yet, Sean. Andy's gone hard, uh, Frank went less hard, uh, but Andy looked comfortable, and in each turn that that's happened, Alberto Contador seemed to be in a little bit of trouble. I get the feeling it closer to the top, if Andy really goes, Contador's not going to be able to follow. Well, uh, on the uh, indication we're getting on the previous attacks, it looks like Contador is in difficulty, uh, and uh, we're guaranteed to see more attacks from the favourites, and certainly from the two Schleich brothers. Uh, uh, 
have they thrown in the real you know, full on attacks uh, difficult to know because the percentage when they do uh, difficult to calculate that on our screen and uh, yep. you, you have to be there really to know it but I reckon that yeah, there's more in these uh, big favours especially in the Schlecks they seem to be the ones who want to go and uh, just make it difficult for all the other favourites and they're just going to you know, keep on repeating the attacks Sadi Gazar has got 7.4 kilometres going 50 seconds of a gap behind this group here this very select group is in the really steep section now that kicks up again is this the place Sean that they should really go uh, for the jugular yes I think in the steep sections that's where uh, you sh you go in the attack and uh, you know anybody is suffering well then uh, we're going to see uh, the difficulty the, the difficulty they're in immediately Tentador they won this Tour de France three times but uh, it's looking very difficult for him at the moment. He's still hanging in with this group. He says he's feeling better. Yeah, we interviewed him this morning and Eurosport said he's feeling better and he should be able to be okay today. Of course, he could, he's an arch bluffer as well. But the indications are not good for Alberto Contador. He's taking time to react and normally that isn't the case. Maybe he is just sandbagging. Maybe he's just thinking, well, you know, I'll make them think I'm feeling bad and then I'll go bang like I did on Mont Ventoux. But... I tend to think otherwise, personally. Yeah, Andy Schleck is going again. This time, got Contador digs deep to try and uh, react and does. Uh, and then uh, Evans goes after him with Fokler in the wheel. Uh, having got back to the group, Tom Danielson is dropped again. More, uh, more positive this time around Andy Schleck pushing hard and uh, looks to be a little bit more dedicated response there from Alberto Contador he was on the ball a bit quicker there uh, yes uh, he reacted so quickly there and uh, seemed to be a bit more comfortable there in that uh, one uh, and again it's you know, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, which one is he going to mark? Uh, is he going to mark both the slacks all the way, or will he make the calculation? You know, the the one which he can maybe allow a little bit more of an advantage, as we see Van der going, and that's what we need. We need some of the other riders uh, of uh, this leading group to go in the attack. Jelle van den Dert is going for this as a stage win. That is what uh, van den Dert is going for. 12 minutes and 54 seconds down in the general classification. They'll let him go a little bit. He's calculated well that he's uh, able to go just a little bit because they're going to be looking at each other, these guys here. Basso, Contador, Evans, the two Schleck boys, Fuchler. Uh, Fuchler are almost the odd one out here, really, because we haven't seen this sort of situation since 2004 for him uh, here, or in any mountain finish just this year for the first time. Perot is still hanging in there. That's uh, showing his potential is being recognized and uh, fulfilled. Damiano Cunego here, Rigoberto Iran riding brilliantly for Sky. Is uh, Vokler going to attack? Nope, just wants to set a little pace on the front here. He's playing a clever game, uh, Sean. He knows he's not the supernatural climber uh, that perhaps Andy Schleck is and certainly that Alberto Contador is as Jelle van Inert rides up to the rear wheel of Sandy Cassar looking much more composed and poor old Cassar another loss is going to be for Francaise de Jure I would suggest although they could, the two of them could ride together I think van Inert going to go straight by him yes straight by we can see Cassar he's at the end of his powers and uh, there's no way he's going to be able to take the wheel of van Inert if he does uh, as he, he's not doing it but uh, if he did try to latch onto the wheel it would be only a matter of a number of metres before he'd lose contact and uh, Van der Dert is the one yeah, who uh, you know, uh, is going to be allowed a little bit more time a long ways down in the general classification and we see two days ago when he arrived at the finish uh, with Luis Leon Sanchez he was in real good shape and uh, it's a good time to take it because if you wait for two further up uh, then it's going to be more difficult to get away so it's six, just over six kilometres out uh, it's the time to try and uh, make the move of Van Dert. Basso now gets the front setting the pace the way he likes to, to do it Sean just uh, metronomically going at it There's the, he doesn't like those big attacks so it's good for Fuchler as well 
Uh, yes, and we can see Basso um, in difficulty in a number of times when the Schlecks threw in the uh, big attacks, uh, just losing 5-10 metres each time and, and then coming back. So he's that style of rider. Uh, this, on this climb today, unfortunately, he hasn't got uh, Sylvester Smith to make the pace for him. So a, a big loss for Basso because he would be uh, of great importance to Basso to make a number of kilometres at a nice high pace. And he's, like, he's trying to up the pace now. So it's a steady turning of the screw for uh, Ivan Basso. Fuckler in the wheel, followed by Frank Schleck, then uh, Evans, then uh, Contador. Andy Schleck is on the right-hand side. You have to watch out for these fans. They don't get in the way because there's a lot of jostling going on. Damiano Cunigo seeming to be a little bit... Uh, on the rivet here, oh, he's losing ground. Damiano Cunigo losing ground to these riders. Pierre Roland is passed by Rigoberto Uran. At the front, it's Basso, then Frank Schleck, then Thomas Fokler, then uh, Alberto Contador, then Jean Christophe Perrault. Very, very good for Perrault to be in here. And, and there, followed by Andy Schleck, Samuel Sanchez, Rigoberto Oran, and then Pierre Roland still hanging in there, although I'm not sure for how much longer. And Damiano Kudago is burying himself behind, trying to ride back up to the wheel. He must hope, sure, uh, sure Kunigo, they must hope that they just slackens off a little bit as yes. they look at each other. Well, they're always hoping for that, but I think uh, it would be a bit of a dream if they do slacken off any bit. And if uh, uh, if Basso stops, uh, you know, riding on the front, uh, then we will see an attack from somebody else here. So Kunigo, I think he's going to take the ticket today. And it was just a matter of uh, how many days he could last in there because he always, you know, uh, takes a ticket at sometimes in the big mountain stages. The two Schlecks will be uh, reasonably happy. The Basso is setting the pace, and Rigoberto ran now, uh, just losing a bike length or two. Meanwhile, Yeda Vanendert is out by himself. He's got uh, 18 seconds of an advantage. Gives the uh, one of the Basque supporters uh, a slap. Fair enough, Yella. And here comes the yellow jersey group with uh, Frank, there's Andy Schleck on the front now. All of the men in this group now, with the exception of uh, Pierre Roland, of course. All a danger. Great riding by Thomas Fuckler in the yellow jersey. Because he came, uh, rode up here with, or rode uh, well with Bradley Wiggins in the Dauphiné. Once again, Basso sets the pace. Fuckler gets to the front. Just evens it out a little bit. Evans in the wheel. It's, this is a fascinating, uh, almost stalemate in the moment, Sean, with five kilometers to go. Yellow uh, Van der is, is getting a, uh, a real lift from this. It sort of flattens out at this point. It's not as steep with five kilometers to go. And he's got away at exactly the right time. As we said, he's 12 minutes, 54 seconds down. He's allowed a little bit of leeway. Meanwhile, these men are still sort of looking at each other, so much so that Uran's managed to ride back in. Yes. And so has Kuniger. Yes, and I think uh, for Van der that it's looking interesting at the moment he's going to get to the 30 seconds and uh, not as difficult here in this section and uh, that's where you can pull out uh, you know the uh, seconds because uh, you can give it a hundred percent where back in the group there we can see uh, Basso leading but he's looking around to see where the others are and not giving it his all uh, but again I think we will see attacks and uh, Van Andert needs to you know really be real strong in the final because still with just under five kilometers to go, it's uh, it's going to be a difficult one. Basso's really turned the screw on this one, hasn't he? He's opened up the tap a little bit, and riders beginning to uh, hurt to try and get back on. We're all there at the moment. He doesn't have that explosion that uh, some of the other riders do. He doesn't have the ability to uh, sprint off after uh, an attack either, in the same way that. Cadell Evans does. Samuel Sanchez is the one who's looking interesting for me here. Uran still in the group, Perot still in the group, and as the pace slackens once more, 
And maybe Damiano Cunego will ride back up here, but uh, the gap looking a little bit big at the moment. Every time the pace uh, drops off, he tries to get back on again. This is uh, quite a steep ramp here, coming around this hairpin. It's, it almost goes into a right-hander straight away at the, just this uh, point where Ivan Basso is arriving at Vukla gets into the wheel once more with Andy Schleck just behind still no massive massive uh, hit by one of the big boys great riding by uh, Roland Fan fabulous amount of fans out on the road they are getting a little overexcited at times though one has to say Yellow and there it's already lamped one of them And I'm immensely impressed with the effort that uh, Thomas Fuckler is putting in today. He's got 149 over Frank Schreck, and so far they haven't got rid of him, Sean. No, and it uh, doesn't look like they're going to get rid of him because nope. he's, uh, you know, very active when the attacks were thrown in by the Schlecks there immediately in the wheel, also in Basso's wheel. And, uh, uh, you know, Vukler, he's a, he's a type of rider. If he gets uh, close to the finish here, he could be uh, one who will go on the attack himself. And we can see Van and Dert, you know, having difficulty pulling it out, although he's pulled another couple of seconds. Uh, but it's proven to be a difficult one as he goes under the four kilometres. That's flat here at this point. There's a hot oh, oh, all the campers are at four kilometers it's good it's flat for about uh, okay here goes Samuel Sanchez the reaction from uh, Andy Schleck and Fuckler ups the ante behind sprinting to try and get to these two men with Evans in his wheel and then Contador Frank Schleck bides his time behind Ivan Basso who tries to have to dig in and almost time trial his way to the rear wheel of Alberto Contador. Contador looking more impressive than he was earlier in the climb. It's the, not as uh, steep obviously here and Sanchez drives on again. Samuel Sanchez who started the day at 4 minutes and 11 seconds down. Uh, Fulkler wants somebody to come through and give him a hand here to try and shut this one down. And I think he probably is uh, right to do so. Cadell Evans now for BMC in the black and the red on the front with the yellow jersey of Tommy Fockley. He's been in this position before defending this jersey on this very mountain against uh, Lance Armstrong. I think he went to the day with over a minute or so in hand and came in with 22 seconds if I'm uh, not mistaken. But there or thereabouts anyway in the end still in hand. It didn't last any longer than that but uh, it was a brave effort at the time. He's matured as a rider. He's won a, a hatful of uh, plaudits and uh, awards, including two French championships, uh, GP Plouet uh, last one, he, he won the Quebec GP last year. He's won a number of big rides at the beginning of this year. He is a terrific rider. Suits the hard, punchy courses. But, uh, today, once again, showing he can ride well beyond that. Thomas Vukla, the French, will be absolutely ecstatic tonight and he hangs on to this jersey in style yellow and Dett. well have the belgians found their new cycling uh, hero sean they've lost jürgen van den Broek, but yellow and Dett, who looked good all the way through the tour in fact looked pretty good last year too and van and Dett climbing pretty well he hasn't got again the explosion of a man like this samuel sanchez but uh, sanchez is going for a double win here in the mountains in the pyrenees for his Basque team in front of a Basque home crowd, but Van and Dert, very good. It's uh, really good, and uh, you know, um, since we've arrived in the real mountain stage, is uh, very impressive, and uh, you know, taking uh, uh, taking his chance there today, going, but uh, still, you know, struggling there to pull out any major adventure because there are always attacks and always somebody prepared to keep it rolling on the front of the group. Uh, it'll be interesting to see now, Luis Leon Sanchez, how good is he? Can he make it across as he goes? two to three kilometers to go the interesting one is i suppose uh, pierre Roland. we see him there and he's just hanging on the rear getting dropped getting back in again and uh, they seem to be uh, sparing him within the europe car team and of course he qualifies as well for the uh, young jersey classament and he's only 920 down in general classification so i i think they're thinking of they're thinking of that within the team could be the case Roberto Oran looks like he's going to finish up in the best young riders jersey 
at the end of the day, though. He wasn't that far down, 120, I think. And uh, Ran has been climbing brilliantly. Not that far down in the best young riders uh, competition was uh, Rigoberto Uran. I think it's uh, maybe his day today. Coming towards the uh, front. 2.05, sorry, uh, Rigoberto Uran was down. Mistaking that. Two minutes is still a fair amount to pull out of uh, some of the others. Rain, we're not quite sure how Rain Teramai is doing. He's a bit further down the hill. Pierre Olan moving forward towards helping Thomas Vuchler. Uh, Basso gets back on the front. As soon as it slackens, Sean, the uh, up and down pace, up and down pace comes, it stops. Uh, Basso wants to drive it on at his pace. Uh, yes, he wants to keep it uh, moving along. And uh, of course, when, uh, when it slows down a lot, well, then there's yeah, surely going to be attacks. And that's not what Basso, Basso wants here. He wants to keep it going at a pace where it prevents the other rivals from throwing these big attacks. Forty-three seconds for our leading rider, Yella Van Indert. He's being chased by Samuel Sanchez, who has 23 seconds. And no surprise that Sandy Kassar has got the most aggressive rider of the day. Another 2,000 euros in the back pockets of the boys from Francais de Jeu. Still waiting. They're still waiting to do something. Basso tries to up the pace a little bit thinking, well, I'm going to take my opportunity. If these guys want to attack each other, I'm going to try and go. Jean-Christophe Perraud, I think, goes with him. Remember that uh, Ivan Basso was lying three minutes and 16 seconds down on the GC today. He's really going to have to rock it up the last two kilometers to put big time into either of the Schlecks or Evans or even Fokler, Sean. Yes, uh, there's, there's none of the big favourites going to put anything major into each other here at this oh. point. We see Evans having Vukla. a go and Vukla comes across, but uh, uh, Vukla certainly is going to hold on to the yellow jersey. That's a terrific dig by Vukla and Alberto Contador. Rides up behind Cadell Evans. Evans, I think, uh, knows actually that Fokler is a little more powerful than perhaps some of the eyes give, other guys give him credit for. He's trying to go around the outside, put some distance between himself and the other big favourites. He's got on the attack. Very clever. He's used the other riders in between him. Basso's in the way of Andy Schleck, and Schleck goes around the outside of him finally. So does Fokler. Two kilometres to go. Oh, that'll annoy the Schlecks. Cadell Evans uh, going on the attack and thinking, I'll tell you what, I'll just put myself ahead of these riders, see if I can get a bit of an advantage. Great, great riding by Thomas Faulkner again. Wonderful stuff. No Frank Schleck here. No, Frank is just uh, losing a bit of ground here. We can see him just off the rear. Evans on the drops hunched over the bike Andy Schleck tall rangy sitting there still looking behind him just stop looking for your brother Frank's made it back you've got to look for Alberto and the rest of them you've got to look for Tommy at this rate I hope he isn't looking behind for where Frank is as Volker is going to go on the attack is he no oh, he's just testing the leg that's into the wheel of Basso. I would not be surprised, Sean, if Thomas Fockler does not attack in the last kilometre. It's uh, highly possible because we know the style of rider he is and uh, the way he's reacting here to all the attacks, he has to be feeling good. It's just uh, unbelievable uh, the way he's riding and the form he's in. And uh, the question was today, would he be able to hold on to the yellow? Uh, this was the day when it would be a real big test for him and what a way, what a way he's doing it. He is. He's able to... Uh, jump when uh, some of the faster men go like Andy Schleck and uh, he's able to just get in there and keep the same similar sort of pace when Ivan Basso ups it he is the all-round rider of this year's Tour de France so far Thomas Fuchler not a more popular man in the yellow jersey could there be in this Tour de France 1k to go for Yellow Van Andert. And how far behind is Samuel Sanchez? Well, I don't think he's going to catch uh, Van and Det. Uh, now he's going to be battling for a second place if these guys come up. 54 seconds. 
is the gap between Van and Dert and uh, these men. Here comes Samuel Sanchez. The gap is about 23, 24, 24 seconds for Samuel Sanchez. I think the dream of taking two wins in the Pyrenees is not going to come off. Great ride by Jean-Christophe Perraud. We mustn't forget him in this front group as well. Both Schlex, Andy and Frank here. Ivan Basso, Contador, Evans, uh, Jean-Christophe Perraud and the man of the moment, Thomas Faulkner. They're coming up to the one kilometre to go banner. Come on, Thomas. You've got a day where you can just sit in the peloton tomorrow. Go on. Go on, go on. Go around the outside. While Andy's looking for his brother. Go on. Cadell Evans on the drops uh, characteristically at this point in the game. Looking to see where people are waiting to have to respond to uh, an attack. At the moment, it's still not arriving with about 800 uh, metres to go. And this is looking like it's going to be one of those almost uh, track sprints. Uh, Jelle van den Dert, a fine, finely judged victory because nobody's going to catch him now. 800 meters for the main favorites. Van den Dert is going to take a victory here on the most difficult day possibly in the whole of the Tour de France. Jelle van den Dert, I wonder what Jürgen van den Broek is thinking looking at this on his TV screen back in Belgium with a shattered shoulder. Uh, Jelle van den Dert, his faithful climbing domestique, has ridden away and taken the win in the most uh, difficult stage in the Pyrenees and possibly the most difficult stage in the Tour de France. And a huge welcome from the French and Basque crowd here. And Spanish, of course. They can hardly be. That's great riding by Yella van den Dert. Uh, just uh, behind was Samuel Sanchez and they're still wanting a Pierre Rollin takes the pace making at the front with 450 meters to go. Nobody's going to make up any really significant time. In comes Samuel Sanchez. Huge crowd support for the Basque team leader, but 20 seconds down, he doesn't take the victory. So much wanted. Two he'd have loved to have had. Away goes uh, Schleck. And Andy Schleck trying to put some seconds in. Thomas Fokler responding. He doesn't quite have the explosive legs. And Rigoberto Aran is it coming up and past him. Here goes Andy Schleck trying to take a few seconds out of his rivals. Looks over his shoulder. Evans responds. Uran, Fokler, um, Contador, Perod, Frank Schleck, Pierola, and Basso at the back. Too late. Too late, Andy. Too late to put big uh, seconds into everybody else. And Thomas Fokler hangs on once again. Plateau de Bay has been a play, a high mounted that cannot unseat. Thomas Faulkner from the yellow jersey. It's really amazing. I thought I saw Andy Schleck and Frank Schleck attacking several times, and then I thought uh, I have not, nothing to lose because I'm not in the classification. So I thought uh, I can go maybe before the, the favorites and make a little gap, and then they come maybe back, and uh, I have already the advance of, uh, of my attack. But uh, there was no, nobody that can uh, come back, so uh, I was lucky. An unbelievable stage today. You were in yellow, you were with the favorites, you are among the favorites uh, now. Maybe, but uh, I would lie if I say that uh, I expect to be I expect to be with the best climber today. 
I was trusting my in my chance to keep the jersey today, since the stage of the other day it, it gave me great confidence. But uh, I'm really surprised to be with them uh, at the end. Really, really. But it's a good surprise. How was it, Frank? It's beautiful. I enjoyed every moment. <laughs> I mean, it, it looked, it looked towards the end that uh, the rhythm was going down, and you guys were controlling each other. You tried with your brother once again to to make the difference. Huh? Yeah, we tried uh, several times. The only one who was uh, a little bit interested was Ivan Basso. All the others just just looked at each other, and uh, Ivan, uh, my brother, and myself, we tried actually to race. Uh, I, yeah, towards the end, the last 2K, I was really suffering and, well, I'm uh, very happy about my, about my day today. ¿Cómo se fue esto? Esto plato de Bay. <coughs> bueno, ha sido, ha sido duro, ha sido un, un puerto en el que, bueno, ha habido demasiada vigilancia entre todos. Eh, ha sido un principio, un principio de tour especialmente, especialmente duro en la tele, pues no se puede apreciar, pero las carreteras tan estrechas y, y toda la zona de viento pues ha hecho que, que las fuerzas eh, estén muy mermadas por parte de los corredores, están muy igualadas y bueno, en un puerto como, como el de hoy, que, que a veces es de, de mucha velocidad, eh, era complicado romper la carrera. ¿Está tu objetivo hoy esperar que los otros se mueven antes? Bueno, sí, yo quería ver un poco a ver cómo, cómo transcurría todo. Eh, he visto, que, he visto que, que la cosa estaba muy igualada, que eh, en un puerto como el de hoy es muy importante el factor sorpresa. En ese sentido, pues en mi, en mi caso es totalmente, totalmente nulo y bueno, eh, era complicado romper la carrera, habrá que esperar a los Alpes. Sí, yeah, I just want to sprint for gas. I didn't really expect to, to get the gap, but I felt really good today. Can continue. We surprised your rivals, Cadell, Ivan didn't try to attack more. For me, the strongest is Ivan. Was today a disappointment or a good day for, for Leopard? No, I think it was a good day. I mean, uh, Frankie didn't feel fantastic the last kilometer. Uh, I could see it. But uh, I don't know, again, maybe three, four seconds. So every second count and uh, shows, shows that I'm in a great shape today. Saturday saw the peloton ride out for a showdown at Plateau de Bay. But while the vultures gathered up on high, down on the road, the day's intended victim showed no signs of rolling over. Alberto Contador, fending off the attacks of the Schlecks and even Ivan Basso, and finishing with his rivals to keep his tour hopes alive. And in the end, while Yele Van Der took the stage and the biggest win of his career, the big yellow jersey story turned out to be another man. Thomas Vockler, still in the leader's jersey, still matching the favourite stroke for stroke across some of the hardest climbs this race has to offer. And France now begins to wonder, if the Pyrenees can't stop him, what will? That, though, is a question for the days to come, for Sunday takes us back onto the flat roads of Languedoc-Roussillon. 192.5 kilometres long, stage 15 is hot and flat with the possibility of crosswinds and the strong probability of a sprint finish. Mark Cavendish territory, in other words, and providing the Manxman has recovered from his torrid time in the mountains, today he could land a decisive blow in the green jersey battle. All the action coming up in stage 15. Now, 
The green jersey Mark Cavendish is uh, fifth back in this line, the HTC train, uh, pulling it along with Rojas just behind. Here comes uh, uh, Philippe Gilbert around the inside. I wonder if they've done the reconnoitering of this course beforehand because it is a little bit uphill, not what we expected, certainly from the route book. Rojas in the wheel of Mark Cavendish. Remember, 10 or so points available. Rojas is pretty good in the uphill as well. He goes on the inside. You can see him a bit too close to the crowd. Don't complain about that, uh, uh, Rojas, if it gets in the way. It's uh, Philippe Gilbert on the right-hand side of the shot. Is he going to come over the top of Cavendish? It's quite close. No, it's Cavendish, Rojas and Gilbert in that order, I think. And a better sprint from Philippe Gilbert there, finishing towards the last uh, number of days we've seen him having difficulty, you know, getting uh, any major uh, uh, points. And uh, the lead out men for Rojas and for Mark Cavendish, yeah, not as much uh, up to the fore and staying up to the fore as they go over the line. And uh, the reason being this sprint a little bit more difficult, that little bit of uphill uh, served uh, well for Philip Gilbert. 12 seconds are still remaining. If you're looking out for the red kite that always hangs from the inflatable cross over the road, uh, today there isn't one because uh, we've just been informed of that by Race Radio, but there isn't one because the winds are so high they would have blown it over and they don't want anything to come down on the circuit. So it's uh, we'll just have to read off what we get from the screen. 3.7 kilometres to go with seven seconds. Garmin Savello coming to the front for Tyler Farrer now. Terps just doing a very good job indeed staying out here. Seven seconds might not sound like a lot, but uh, they're having trouble to shutting it down. Wise move, I think, to take the Flamme Rouge out. The last thing you want is it coming down in a high wind just as the peloton arrives. Ten seconds, it's yo-yoing about a little bit at the moment. Coming up to the three kilometre to go, uh, Mark Sean. Uh, no, Mark, yeah, three kilometre to go, Mark Sean. Not Mark Sean, obviously. Uh, and still to wind it up. Yes, and uh, we can see here the little bit of a difficult oh, one. Look, Gilbert. Gilbert. Gilbert has gone, and as that. Uh, who's the. Delage has gone with him. Anthony Roux, I think, who's tried to go with uh, Philippe Gilbert at this point. There's a little bit of a, a rise here, and immediately. The attack comes from Philippe Gilbert. You said, Sean, that he would try and give it a go as soon as he possibly could. Yes, uh, well, any occasion he gets, and this is a little bit of the kick-up uh, that I talked about in the final kilometres, and uh, it will be interesting to see. The Francais de Joux rider, he's not taking, he's starting to take a pull on the front now, and that's what he needs, because uh, we could see uh, to close down on Treps, Tepsler, I think the bunch was having difficulty. And uh, Thomas de Ghent is the other rider here from uh, uh, Vaconsoleil. De Ghent, who was such a hero in Paris-Nice. HTC don't want to let this one get away because Philippe Gilbert is very, very, very threatening in the green jersey competition. Philippe Gilbert pushing as hard as he possibly can to try and make that difference. Yeah, I'm sure the other, I'm sure Anthony Roux is the rider from Francis de Gilles. They'll have to work, and Gilbert backs off. It's uh, Makato then, Race Radio says, who's come across. Oh, round the outside of Gilbert. Gilbert gave it a go, and it's all just blown to pieces a little bit here. The lead out coming once again now being set, the pace being set by Lamprey this time around. Order restored a little bit, but Roux still nestling in that little group there and Gregor Bole on the inside in the Slovenian Champions jersey the predominantly white jersey with blue shorts Pataki clearly wanting to have a go at this one as well and you can see him just uh, sitting behind Mark Cavendish G moving up to the front big 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 power leading uh, Boersenhagen and possibly Swift there you can see Bosenhagen and then Swift behind. So Swift possibly the protected man today to go for it. Bosenhagen swings a little bit in the uh, out of the way of Matt Goss, just trying to keep out uh, of trouble. Almost shoulder to shoulder between uh, Renshaw now and Bosenhagen, who's leaning a little bit on him. Around the inside then comes uh, Omega Farmer Lotto, Jürgen Rowlands doing the work. 
Andre Greipel not to be seen at the moment. Renshaw still has to release Mark Cavendish. Bosenhagen going for the line on the left-hand side. Goss swings over. Bosenhagen stops working. Swift is in the wheel of Mark Cavendish. Fa Julian Dean and Tyler Farah next uh, in line. And Alessandro Pataki. Mark Renshaw still driving on, driving on, driving on. Is that Daniel Oss still in there as well? Mark Cavendish goes for the line with Oss behind him. Farah comes out of the wheel of Oss. Farah on the uh, right-hand side of your screen. Cavendish takes it. Terrific win by Mark Cavendish because Gilbert almost upset the apple cart completely. And they had to regroup forces very quickly. But HTC delivering Mark Cavendish with cool precision once again for another win, Sean. Terrific ride. Yes, uh, a terrific ride. And again, the HTC riders... Uh, uh, you know, doing the job real well, and uh, the lead out again for Cavendish uh, uh, by Renshaw, perfect, uh, a perfect lead out, and he, he took it up a little bit early, Renshaw, but really kept it going well, and as we can see here, when Mark uh, Cavendish takes it up, he uh, he just takes this a little bit of advantage, but not as much as normally when he goes in the kick, and uh, we can see Farah coming, but uh, Farah coming from too far off with Pataki toward. I always say, you know, I can't let the guys down when they ride like that. I think the fact that the other sprint teams don't ride, they must be, they don't have confidence in the sprinters, you know. I think uh, the reason my guys ride is because they have confidence in me. The reason the director says ride is because they have confidence. I so think if no one wants to help us, what's the point in paying the sprinters really, you know. Yeah, it was incredible. The guys rode again all day, held five to us. First half, we worked with with Europe car and they were riding really strong and then second half yeah we were on our own the guys are motivated you know incredible I thought they might be a bit tired you know after waiting for me and pulling like they did yesterday um, but I think the fact that we got through yesterday like we did was even more you know it was more gratifying to try and win here you know and uh, it was a difficult finish technical finish incredible difficult with the win the GC riders were fighting with Cadell Evans with the Schleck brothers with Alberto Contador, with Ivan Basso in the last kilometres, you know, it's it's not normal, <laughs> it's really not normal. And then, uh, well, the guys just kept together, you see, and they just kept together, kept together, kept together. Incredibly disciplined, incredible group of guys, I'm so, so proud of them. Peut-être le plaisir d'avoir le directeur du Tour avec le maillot jaune. Christian, c'est quand même, vous le disiez, c'est quand même un grand bonhomme, un grand champion sur ce Tour de France. Pas seulement sur ce Tour de France. Euh, Thomas, c'est un, c'est un, c'est un vrai coursier. Non, non. Ce que je voulais simplement dire, c'est que c'est comme disent les coureurs, un vrai coursier. Quand un coureur, un ancien coureur dit un coursier, ça veut dire quelque chose. Qu'ensuite, il est toujours là quand ça compte, et pas simplement dans la compétition. Il était là pour que l'équipe vive encore. Et il était là lorsque, au mois de mai, nous avons fait, avec le conseil général de la Vendée, une soirée pour le Tour de France. C'était chez lui à Mouilleron, il était là. Il avait trouvé le temps de revenir pour être là face à ses supporters, face à les gens qu'il aime. Et, 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 et ça, je trouve ça formidable. C'est-à-dire que... Euh, il le, il le fait naturellement, quoi. C'est ça qui me plaît encore plus. C'est pas forcé, c'est pas quelque chose, c'est pas, pas un plan de communication. Il est naturellement comme ça et les gens le ressentent. Et quand j'ai dit à Thomas l'autre jour, 7 400 000 personnes, alors pardon sur France Télé, mais ça cartonne aussi sur Eurosport, il m'a dit c'est pas possible. Alors tout le monde est content. Tu m'as répondu alors tout le monde est content. Eh bien Thomas, c'était pareil hier. 7 400 000, ce sont les meilleures audiences du tour depuis 6 ans. Et le petit bonhomme là, il n'y est pas pour rien. Thomas, ça vous fait quoi d'entendre ça du directeur du Tour de France Bien entendu, c'est. Ça fait très plaisir, hein. 
Christian Prudhomme, c'est quelqu'un qui a déjà prouvé plusieurs fois qu'il qu aimait euh, fondamentalement le cyclisme. Et bien sûr, des, ça fait très plaisir, c'est sûr. Merci. merci.